So one of the biggest challenges at the same time, opportunities of our time is in the area of energy and sustainability. And transportation sector is at the heart of it. If we want to move toward net zero, we have no choice but to address it for transportation. And I'm pleased today to introduce to you one of our initiatives at McMaster University, the Electric City, addressing the sustainability in transportation sector. So if you look at the Electric City is not a place, is not a thing, is not a group. It's uh, a vision. It's about enabling the next generation of transportation systems which need to be decarbonized and the best sustainable way for decarbonizing transportation is electrification. The car of the future has to be electric. It has to be connected. It has to be autonomous capable, but also we want it to be more accessible, inclusive, functional, and sustainable for everyone. Let's talk about why we call it the electric city. It's because of Hamilton. Let's go back to 100, more than 100 years ago. Hamilton was known as the electric city. It was one of few cities, very few cities in the world that had electricity, and it was clean hydro power, carbon free electric generation. People from around the world used to come to Hamilton to see the city at night. And, and for several years, Hamilton was the place with the cheapest electric power in the whole world. That enabled many companies, many industries to come to Hamilton to manufacture, to produce things. And because of that, Hamilton then became the home of the manufacturer. That was Hamilton. So a uh, hundred years later, let's see what has happened. We are heavily, heavily dependent on fossil fuel. So if you look at our transportation system, it's just not sustainable. We need, and over the past 100 plus years, the, the cars, vehicles in general, they have consumed much of the world's oil. And this is just not sustainable. You know, the Stone Age ended not because of lack of stones. We need to end the Oil Age, not because we run out of oil. And by the way, no matter what's your politics, you need to be for net zero. Because if you are not, literally, we are going to go run out of oil. So there is no other choice. We need to do it sooner because it's about our planet. It's about our communities. And I want to highlight the efficiencies in transportation. So yes, we are dependent on fossil fuels. But if you have a conventional gasoline car, the typical efficiency, average efficiency of an internal combustion engine is actually 10 to 20%. So the peak efficiency of an engine could go to above 30%, but the average what we call tank to wheels efficiency for a car, full size car, if it's not hybrid or electric, is 20% or less. That means when you use your car, 80% is wasted. Now, the problem is bigger than that because in North America, we have a lot of single occupancy uh, trips. So typically, the, the driver is the only payload in a vehicle. So if, and it's about 5% of the total vehicle. So if you are like 200 pounds, like me, and you have, you have SUV, and the SUV is 3,800 uh, 3, pounds, your weight is 5% of the total weight. That means you go from point A to point B, 95% of the energy is moving the car from point A to point B. 5% is moving you. So you multiply 20% efficiency and 5% efficiency, your efficiency is less than 1%. It's like, you know, 
you go to a gas station, you have a big SUV or pickup truck, and you pump gas, let's say 100 liters. No, it's like putting 99 liters, putting it on the ground, and using only one liter to, to do the right work for you. It's a lot worse than that because we are burning that 100 liter, the whole thing, and we are creating emissions. Again, this is bad. We cannot keep doing this. We need to do more. We need to do something more now, and we need to do it together. The solution is you need to electrify. So we need to use electric vehicles. So if you have an electric car, the efficiency instead of 20% or less, would be 80% or higher, could be peak efficiency of electric propulsion motors are above 90%, right? And your vehicles would be lighter as well. And if you generate from renewable energy and clean uh, carbon-free sources of energy, that's good. If your electric generation is not clean, still that's a lot better than gas engine uh, vehicles. So, and you make the car lighter, but that's not enough. You need to push for mass transit. You need to push for public transportation, which are a lot more efficient. And you need to, you know, help uh, people walking more. So if you can, if you are able, walk more. If you have a knee problem like me, Get an electric scooter, enable uh, micromobility. So I have an electric scooter and the efficiency of that thing is way above 80%. And when I move from point A to point B, actually 85% of energy is moving me. 15% is moving the scooter. It's completely opposite of my car and it's fun. Uh, and I can go to, I think I'm limited legally to like 25 or 30 kilometers per hour, and my range is about 70 kilometers. So we need to enable electric scooters, electric bicycles. We need to promote ride sharing and so on. But again, that's not enough because what I talked about is the hardware, the vehicle. We need to connect them together. We need to have a system integrator at Mac we have an amazing partner, Cubic Transportation System, and they are one of the world leaders when it come to, comes to system integrations for transportation systems and uh, traffic management. So it's about linking everything, incentivizing people, nudging people to walk more, bike more, use the public transportation. If you have really efficient system, but if you are not using it as a system, that's as an, a smart intelligent system, that's not going to be good enough. So I talked about uh, the vision for electric city and why we call it electric city and what we need to do, but let's see how we are doing it. Let's uh, start with the foundation we have built at McMaster Automotive Resource, not Research Center, Mark, because it's a resource for industry. We are one of the biggest, I believe the biggest, university programs in North America in transportation, electrification, and smart mobility. And we have amazing infrastructure. Over the past 10, 11 years, we have received a lot of support from government, university, and industry to develop the next generation of test infrastructure. And we have multiple test set up that we can test propulsion motors, power trains, entire vehicles and putting them in driving simulator that you can say I'm deriving from Hamilton to Burlington, put your vehicle on that uh, chassis dyno virtually drive. And this is really powerful because if you look at industry right now, a company, a car company, when they want to develop a new vehicle platform, usually it costs them one billion with B dollars and it takes about three years. This is just not possible if we want to move to our net zero because now they need to do many, many more electric vehicles. So what we are proposing is actually a virtual V, design, development, integration, 
in virtual domain and you can optimize it. You can do the entire vehicle design, platform design in less than a year at, at much less than a billion dollars. So that way, you know, you can move toward what we call propose, derive, before, build. So if, when we wanna buy a car, usually we don't buy it until we test drive it. Why a car company should commit mass manufacturing a vehicle before they test it, drive it. So our electric city would enable the platform we are building them to do virtual design. So, so far I have talked about uh, the, the resources we have at McMaster University Mark, but we need to do more. So this is like, it takes a village to raise a child, it takes the whole community to move toward net zero, so we need academia, and we have listed McMaster, we welcome other universities join forces with us. We need government at all levels, city, provincial, different cities, different provinces, and the federal government to join forces with us, and the companies. On the company for private sector, from small companies to SMEs to large uh, companies. Here I have included Enedime. Enedime is a university spin-off company that I have founded out of our university lab is focused on electric motors. Again, talking about net zero, if you look at electric motors, there are 15 million, one five million motors manufactured a day worldwide. About 50%, half of electric power worldwide is used by electric motors. A lot of them, they are 40 to 60% efficient. We have technologies to go above 90%. Imagine in Europe right now, if they change some of their electric motors efficiency, they increase it by 3%, their problem with Russia on, on fossil fuel dependency would go away. And the car of the future needs electric motors, they are all connected. And I have also listed Cubic, because Cubic is one of the world uh, leading uh, integrators for transportation systems and traffic management. They are basically enabling transit authorities and transportation agencies to actually manage transportation demand. They, you know, fare collection, uh, uh, helping uh, the cities to manage different modes of transportation. At the same time, they empower travelers and transit riders to plan their journeys and they pay for them a lot more effectively. And what I'm really excited about the collaboration with Cubic, they, uh, we have done a center of excellence together at McMaster focused on artificial intelligence and machine learning for a smart mobility. And we have about 100 people working on, on that project. And it's when you deal with a ton of data, you need to deal with AI and machine learning. I believe one of the problems for our society is the companies like social media companies, when they do AI, they actually care about clicks or making money. That's not the way we are doing it. It's we are independent at the university and that's why Cubic came to us. Uh, our motivation is different than just making money. So what we have done, our team is uh, diverse from the beginning. And as one of our wonderful postdocs, Hannah says, it's better instead of designing from the universe to a few, it's like I'm designing the transportation for an average person, then I find how I make it for a person with disabilities or different levels of abilities. It's better to do from a few to the universe. So our team is truly diverse and equity, diversity, inclusion, EDI has, is at the heart of it. What does that mean? If my, you know, 83 year old grandma is crossing the street, she needs a little bit more time. So keep the green right, light a little bit longer. If there is a parent with two kids getting on a, you know, a transit bus or a metro station, they need a little bit more time, give them more time. So people are different different levels of abilities, different levels of disabilities, each person is unique, and the AI we are doing is based on that, and that's truly exciting uh, uh, for us. So the results is improving quality of life for everyone. It's fundamental human rights, is 
equitable access is, you know, empowering all walks of life and it's freedom of choice. If I want to go with an electric scooter or I want a bike or I want to run or I want to take transit, as long as they are all sustainable and we address multimodal uh, operation, that would be great. So the vision, again, is to provide a more sustainable, inclusive, and accessible future for all. And this pays off at so many levels. It also is about job creation. It creates jobs. Uh, at the beginning, I said, more than 100 years ago, Hamilton was the lead, was a leading city in the, in the world. We have lost that. Our cities are not at the forefront of transportation system. So we work with Cubic and we have seen their system in New York, Sydney, London, Singapore. They are a lot more advanced than Toronto's of Canada or cities in Canada. We need to, what we are proposing and what we are doing is part of the story of the comeback of the electric city, is comeback of Hamiltons in Canada and bigger cities in, in Canada and actually just to catch up and leave frog and present better longer term solutions for, uh, for our community and society. So the electric city will enable the next generation of transportation systems, and again, EDI is at the heart of it. And at the end, we welcome everyone. This is a call for join forces with us. Come and join us if you are, you know, different cities, different levels of government, transportation companies, industry, university, come and join us. Let's connect. Thank you.